Let's do it. All right. We start talking about Bright, man. Um, we got a lot of uh, we got a lot of division in the group about about Bright. Well, I think there's two I'm things to talk to about, so right? The right? first thing is the movie. Did we like it? Was yes. it good? And then the second thing is the business model and how yes. it impacts things going forward. Yeah, and right? I think most of our divisiveness. Well, actually, I can't really speak. Jack doesn't like it, and I feel like you know. Let's start. Yeah, let's start with you. Why do you? So hold on. First, yeah. this movie got crushed by critics. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. Whether it, whether that was a valid criticism or not, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But. The well, let's let's bring that up. Consensus is that it was bad. Let's bring that right. up right now, right? So the consensus of this, I have no fucking clue what this movie was, right? I had never heard a single thing a critic said. I was in Israel for 10 days. I come back. I'm jet lagged as fuck. It's like 7 in the morning or 5 in the morning. I can't go to sleep. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Will Smith did a movie on Netflix. Right. And I go, I go, fuck it. I can't sleep. I might as well just watch it. And I turn on this movie and I'm besides myself. I'm like, dude, this is incredible for a Netflix show, right? And I understand I'm pointing at Jack as, as I'm saying this. And I've said this about Netflix shows forever, which is they're not as good as HBO show, but the expectation is way lower because you can binge it so you can get through a shitty episode and immediately get what you want the week after. And there are a couple things that lower your expectations. But knowing that, I'm watching this movie and I'm going, this is a phenomenal movie for not having to get up out of my bed and go to the movie theater Buy a ticket, buy popcorn, put on clothes. It's just watch at home. This is right here. This is before I went to iPick, by the way. That's changed everything. <laughs> it's changed everything. So this is pre iPick. This is bed bug movie theater. Yeah. I'm used to when I'm making. Going to go to iPick to watch Sports Center. I or would go to iPick you know <laughs> to nap. Yeah, to nap. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the business someone. model. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a wife. iPick. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty dollars. <laughs> Two hours. <laughs> I feel like Japan had invented that 30 years ago. It's just a nap pod. <laughs> I just thought oh, it was yeah. some fucking good entertainment. Anyway, I watch it. I thought it was fucking amazing. I put a clip. I put a picture up on. I put a picture up on uh, Instagram. And immediately I start getting I start getting ripped. Oh, you're just being a contrarian, Schultz. Uh, people said this movie is trash. The critics said it's trash. I had no clue what the critics said. Then all of a sudden people start saying, yo, I saw it too. These critics are bullshit. I can't believe they're saying it. And I start to look up what critics said, and I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I really enjoyed this movie, and I think I'm a pretty good judge of content. I'm not one of these guys who loves everything. Right. I and and I'm in the business, so I'm I'm watching this with I think pretty uh, clear eyes, you know. Like, and I thought it I thought it was great. I come to find out, I have a conversation with you guys, and Marco and I had a similar idea. Marco, you can express the idea the best way, which is why the critics hated it, and you said. What I said, what, they basically couldn't have an unbiased opinion on something that would crush their business model, which is movies not really releasing in theaters and the need to have critics take on it and the old rigmarole of the movie business instead of going directly to Netflix. So a great point that I didn't realize that you – come a little closer. Yeah. Great point that I didn't realize that you point out right now is – so I chalked it up to something else. I was like, why would the critics rip the movie? And then I go, well, who advertises on a critic's website or who advertises in a critic? The movie theater. Right. Right? So, but what also, what what really cleared something up for me was the fact that reviews are necessary for getting out of your house, putting on clothes, putting on boots, putting on a jacket, and going to a movie theater. They are not necessary for turning on your TV and just watching a show. That's right. word of mouth. Precisely. That's that, social media. That's social that's media. That's word, word of mouth. mouth. That's just, let me just hit play because I know I could bail on this in 15 minutes in fi- if I want. I'm right. not invested. There's no commitment. Right. I ain't even put paying. an outfit on, B. Right. Right. So that's I, I what I didn't realize on. until right now, as you said, you were probably thinking that the whole time, but right yeah. now, as you said that, it's like, yes, the film critics business is risky because we don't need you if I can bail in two minutes. Right. We do need you if I'm going to invest. If I'm going to invest. If yeah. I'm going to take a shorty out. Right. That's an expensive night. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Especially so if you go to the iPick. We're not going to iPick unless it's good. Right. True. Right. So- now I'm starting to see through this. And now Jack is bubbling. He's got a lot to say. Go, I mean, go, 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 like, My whole thing is, you say this is an amazing movie. Is it the movie or the way in which you watch the movie? The, the... But that shouldn't be anything new. Like, you've had Netflix for years. Like, right, you right. But this, this is the first, like, blockbuster Netflix production What movie. I've always like, said is this. Low expectations are the key to life. 100%. You know, a fast food burger from In-N-Out, we say, is amazing. Is it better than a burger from, you know, David Burke or whatever that steak restaurant right. is? Absolutely not. But 
when you walk in and you have the burger in two minutes and it costs you two fifty, you're mm-hmm. like, this is the greatest burger I've ever right. had. So I'm not saying this is fast food film, but what I am saying is being able to sit on my couch and watch a major blockbuster actor, and you could argue too, because Edgerton's no goofball. This guy's in movies. He's a goofball in this movie. He's a great, he's a very funny goofball, but I thought he's good. Maybe you don't like it, but that being said, like when you get to watch these two guys just from the comfort of your own home, you don't have to leave. And I'm getting this for what I perceive is free, because I don't really consider automatic charges on my credit card spending money. Of course not. No, that's it's like spending money at the airport, right? <laughs> it's, it's like, like money, that. It's yeah. cloud. Yeah, yeah, you write it off. Yeah. That's what I say to myself when I'm traveling. When I spend a hundred dollars on at just at the Hudson <laughs> News, <laughs> I write it off. <laughs> yeah, it's write it off. So. I think that increased my appreciation of it. That being said, I like the world. Yeah, really? I'm a world guy. I'm a huge world guy. I can't watch a reg. It's hard for me to watch just a regular show that takes place in New York. I can watch a show with you know maybe orcs or a futuristic thing from Black Mirror. And I thought the world was really cleverly put together. All right, I love. I'm all about the fantasy genre. I love Lord of the Rings. One of my favorite franchises of all time. Yeah. Um, to me, this just came across as analytical. Nonsense, like so. The way that Netflix, <laughs> Oof, the way, Yo, coming the, out hot. The way that Netflix, uh, <laughs> which character their, did you audition? The, for? <laughs> she didn't get it. So, the way that Netflix, uh, you know, like infamously uh, cr- uh, creates their projects is that they look at data, they look at what people are watching, and they go like the whole reason that House of Cards became a project was they said people love at the time Kevin Spacey movies, David Fincher movies. Let's have David Fincher make a Kevin Spacey show. They're making original content. This to me is like they they just put together like fantasy world with cop drama, like Training Day meets Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And it just came across Sounds as that. They're great. Working. Yeah, I'm really loving it. I, <laughs> on paper, I love it. But to me, it just came across as so lazy. Like there was no like deeper anything. It's just like all this nonsense in like futuristic LA and it, I just well, it's today LA. I hate it's it. not futuristic. No, it's futuristic. If you look at the skyline, there's like so new buildings do, and like. So that was the one thing that confused right? me because they did reference how that like there was this war two thousand years ago, right? Right. But like, what was the world like two thousand years ago? Had, had, has it was like was two thousand years ago what we're currently in right now? Or right. No, ago, because they have the same cars. Different. That's what I was thinking. No, the, okay, two thousand so. years ago is arguably when and then G- these when people Jesus basically was born, now, right? they have now assimilated into our society. Some of them for over the last two thousand years. Yeah. Right. Right. Got it. Yeah. Um, to and, present day. To present day. And, you know, people are taking on different attrib- attributes. Like the orcs just happen to dress like Cholos. Yo, you know they what have I mean? to put like, them in like FUBU jerseys. Like, that, but that that's was the, the only thing. <laughs> but I think, I, think it was a, I think it was a look at... Um, it was like, that was kind of like, the movie is supposed to have an allegory of race, but they yeah. somehow managed to be racist on its own. It's yeah. also written by... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, they're supposed to do a thing about race, but then they made really racial stereotypes. Of yeah. Oh, yeah, orcs can't jump. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it you ever seen so an orc jump that high? Yeah. And I thought there were interesting things. Like, yeah, the horse cop was a centaur. I thought that was cute. Bullshit. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I liked I mean, it. I what liked else it. would you make a centaur? I agree. You know, if you're a centaur person and yeah. you want a government job, you're not going to be at the fucking toll booth. No. Right? You're going to be a goddamn horse cop. You're, you're already a right. horse cop. Right? So I thought there was cute little things that happened. I, I, the idea that he was like an oppressed minority or whatever it was. And um, I didn't care for that. Like, I see what they were trying to do with right. that. And it was probably pretty clumsy the way they did it. And okay. kind of like almost too obvious and when i take it out of the context of the racial element yeah and just focus it on like a fantasy cop drama yeah i enjoy it much more yeah if you i just don't think of it was like a serious thing trying to take on race like that i don't like one and, no, and i, th- I, I want to get trying to do that though no, I, think I don't were. like that part. but you you just removed that from I'm your moving that from my brain and i want to get your perspective on this because you're the only minority here but like um with with, with the orc character there was this idea, at least how I saw it, which was what happens when you are a minority, but you don't double down on your group when you actually do things that are maybe uh, go against the grain of your yeah. group. And now you're not accepted by the new group that people perceive you as trying to join. You're also not accepted by your own group. Right. So do you grow, you experience any of that growing up like you are Egyptian yeah. Muslim kid? When you're, you're, when up you're in a brown, house. you're not white and you're not black. So you right. gotta choose. Not even that you have to choose, but like, like I got along with white people, I got along with black people, but you never fully, you're never fully one of them. No, no, no. But you have, side. but you're Muslim, right? But so within you, the comparison is like within the Muslim community. So I and do they so start to look at you? Like, I grew up, there wasn't a big Muslim community, right? So I was either with white or black or you know whatever, right? right? right, right then right. you get older, 
you start meeting other, but like I wasn't part of them either. But you had a big... I didn't grow up like I didn't yeah. have that mentality where like you see a lot of ethnic groups they band together. You see a lot of times you'll see a group of Indians people. You together, didn't have Asians enough to people. be together, right? So I only have a few really close Muslim friends, right? right? But most of my friends are white or black or Spanish or right, all over right, the place, right, right? Right, right? So I'm a little different from that. So when I go and hang out in that world, I'm still an outsider because I'm not in that world. So you're the orc. I'm the orc. But is it more yeah. or, what is it awkward for you? <laughs> <laughs> Please cut I am that. The orc. Say so <laughs> Please cut that. <laughs> Wait, I'm the orc? <laughs> I'm the orc. <laughs> Yo, uh, you feel like you've been waiting to say that your whole life. <laughs> yeah. no, but like, Let's do it. All right.